So I am doing the close-up here, right, right there, and this is very good. And so the audio is still rolling, and I am rolling the camera. And David, when you are ready, I'm just going to give a clap. Welcome to part two of this presentation, how to film awesome shots. For this part, I am joined by the fabulous organist, David Simon, who has agreed to be the subject and to play while I'm demonstrating for you how to film those shots. So next, we're going to talk about lighting. And for this, I'm going to position the lights in three different spots. What you don't want is for light to come from one side, sort of, and then you end up with shadows on the entire other side of your face, or the light just coming from the top, and then you end up with harsh shadows, uh, for example, under your nose and on your neck. So in an ideal world, if uh, you already have a setup with three lights, it would be great if you can put them in sort of a triangle, and I'm going to show you how. And switch it on. Then we're going to have this light from this side. All right. And we're going to place it here. And then the last light, I'm going to place it on this side, so in between the cameras. All right, so now that we have the lights in place, I'm going to ask the production team to kindly switch off their lights so we can see what this looks like. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch the lights on. Starting with the ring light, and next into my LED light, and the second LED light. How does this feel for you, David? Is it comfortable? Yes, good. Right. So next, I'm going to place my microphone. So I'm just going to put it here. And it's also very useful to have a tripod for your microphone as well. So you'd have much more liberty in terms of where you can place it. So in this specific location, I'm going to place the microphone right about here. It is at a good distance from the organ pipes, which are right there, so just a few meters from them. This way, we will be able to capture all the details of the beautiful sound of the organ, but also have some of the echo that is coming from the church. There are a lot of different ways to place the microphone. There isn't one specific answer as to where to place it. I would say experiment in the space that you have to find the best kind of sound. It's all up to you to what you think sounds best, to what you think brings the best out of your playing into the recording. And now we're going to talk about one of the very important concepts when you are recording with an, a device that is not your phone, which is the gain. So I'm going to put the gain here at 10, so the highest level, and I'm going to ask uh, David to please play an excerpt. Thank you. And so if you noticed, we saw that this red light here was always blinking all the time. And we saw that the two upper lines were always peaking right there next to the red dots. This means that when I will listen back to this recording that I made, I'm going to hear a lot of screeching sound. And this is because the gain was way too high of a level uh, considering the loudness of the organ. So we're going to try it again, but I will put the gain a little bit lower and I'm going to tweak it until we find that those lines are not going too high all the time there to the top. So I'm going to ask David to please play again. And we see that this time um, we had the highest levels right around here, so right around two thirds. And this is always a good place to have in your loudest section. Now, the great thing with this specific microphone is that it records two tracks at the same time. One of them with the gain level that you had selected here, and one of them with a lower gain level. 
This way, if for any reason, while you were playing, let's say you decided to use different sounds, uh, it was louder than you had uh, originally anticipated or what you had originally tested. This way you will have a backup track that does not have peaking and screeching kind of sound. So now that we have our lights in place, we have the microphone in place. Next, I'm going to put the phone on the tripod. On my phone, you will see that I have an application open which looks different than what you would normally see in your phone's camera app. This is an application called Filmic Pro, and it gives you a lot of control um, over the camera of your phone. So to start off, you will see actually that on the right, it shows you the gain levels. So even if you connect a, cam um, so even if you connect a microphone directly to your phone, you'll be able to see if it's peaking or not. And actually, you can override the setting in your phone of the microphone that is always changing the gain levels automatically uh, using this application. So it is very useful. And you will see as well that you have a lot of options for the different colors, as you can see here. You will also see that you have options for autofocus, for the light, for slowly zooming in and out. There we go. And even in the settings, you have a lot of control over your video formats. So here I'm going to film in 1080, but you can also film in 4K if that's what you prefer. In terms of the frame rate, I personally prefer for social media content and for uh, when we are recording auditions, do it in 30 frames per second, just because it looks more natural. Uh, it looks more like a regular kind of camera. If you are looking into a more cinematic effect, then you can always try and do the 24 frames per second. But for now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use 30 frames per second. And here it is. All right. Next, I'm going to talk about a very important rule in filming, which is the rule of thirds. I know that growing up, um, whenever our parents or grandparents would take a photo of us, they would always tell us to stand in the middle of the shot, right? So if we are doing that with, an, with the organist, then he would be right there. Actually, a much more interesting shot would be if we framed him either a little bit to the right, in about one third of the right of the shot, or to the left. This makes for a much more dynamic and artistic shot. Like so. And I'll just make sure that the focus is good. That looks nice. And this is, this is looking good. Great. So before I start filming, I'll make sure that I have my audio rolling, which we have tested earlier to make sure we have the good gain level. And it is recording. And then here with the camera, we are also rolling and I'm just going to do a clap to make sure that later when I synchronize the audio and the video that I'm doing it easily. And here we go. So David, when you are ready. Thank you so much. So we are stopping this recording. And now what we're going to do is we are going to film the same thing from a different angle. And you will see later in the editing process how I will put them all together to create something that has different angles, that is really dynamic, that is um, really artistic. I do want to point out that if you are recording an audition, 
uh, you should only use one camera um, from one, one place and not do further editing, like putting the beginning of one take with the end of another take. Um, the purpose of an audition is to see your level, um, how you are able to play a piece from beginning to end. But when you are doing something more artistic, if it's just a demo or something to put on your social media, then you are free to do anything that you want. So now I will place the camera in a different angle. And we're going to get a close-up of the hands, because this is always interesting to see. And it's also really good to uh, vary the shots so you have something that is filmed a little bit from afar, something that is more of a close-up. Those different kinds of shots make for a more appealing video that is more varied. Okay, so I am doing the close-up here and I see that the focus is not good. So I'm going to work on that and I can do that easily here in this application. That right there, and this is very good. I'll probably zoom in a little bit as well, just to get more details. Okay, and so the audio is still rolling, and I am rolling the camera, and David, when you are ready, I'm just going to give a clap. Very nice, and I'm cutting the video here. And I will take it from a different point of view. So maybe we can just do it from behind in the back. You still see me here? Yes. Okay. And I am zooming out here. and making sure that the focus is good. It's looking great. Our audio is still rolling and I am now rolling the video and we'll do a clap when you're ready, David. and we're cutting the video. I want to remind you also that facial expressions are very important. Um, it's something that people don't get to see actually when you're playing in concert. So including that in your online content makes for something that people would not usually have access to, to see, uh, but then they will get to see it in your videos. So it's just a nice way to add value to the kind of content that you are creating. So for this one, actually, I'm going to use the uh, gimbal that I have here. So we are rolling. And when you're ready, David. Amazing. And then in the spirit of things that people don't usually get to see, we're going to get one last shot of the feet. We're rolling the camera and... So now we are done with filming and recording the video and the audio. 
And in the next segment of this video, we are going to be editing what we've worked on.